I'm here with Mohammed Yunus, who is, among other things, the recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, the founder of Grameen Bank, the father of microcredit, and apparently has founded 51 companies. And you were just on a panel at our philanthropy conference with two other very impressive guys, Paul Tudor Jones II and Jeff Skoll. And there are a couple things that were asked there for people who don't have the privilege to be here today that I would love it if you just go over again. You say when you looked at the world's problems, these huge intractable problems, it's sometimes easier to look at them in a smaller way. Yes, every time I do something, uh, uh, first of all, I don't want to get overwhelmed by the uh, giant size of the problem, the global problem. Then you become numbed. Right. You're so insignificant, you can't do anything. So I forgot that. Don't look at that in that way. Find out that the problem is reflected in one person. If it's poverty, don't worry about billions of poor. Just think about one poor person. Can we do something with this one poor person, whoever he or she is in front of you? If you can do something, go ahead and do something. And as a human being, I feel I can do something. I can be useful to some one other human being. I don't have to study, I don't have to do anything. All I know, interact with that person and see how it fits, it, uh, fits myself into her life and solve the problem. And if I know how to solve the problem of one person, even for one day, I know I've done something, Maybe I can do something more for tomorrow or day after. And then you can do for one, for several days, you can do it for another and another. And suddenly you find it, it's the same problem every place. All you have to do, repeat the things. So you found the way, you crack the problem. Cracking the problem is the most fundamental thing. Not just get overwhelmed and make threaten everybody. Oh my God, nobody can, nobody can solve this problem. And you, you said, you know, microfinance, which is something you're famous for, started sort of in the same way. It started really with one village and a small person then is ballooned. Can you describe sort of how that started and how it ballooned into this global phenomenon? Uh, this desperate situation in Bangladesh and I was working in the village, not working and just trying to see if I can make myself useful to another human being. I didn't know what else I can do. I know exactly what need to be done. The only thing I was trying to do is there something I can be useful for. So I did a lot of these small things and I saw the loan sharks in the village lending tiny money to the poor people and kind of controlling their life. Yeah. And it's so ugly. You don't know what to do about it. And it's such a global problem. Then I said, forget about global problem. I can solve the problem of these few people in this village. And I can do that. All I have to do is to lend the money myself. Right. If I make the money available to them, they don't have to go to the loan sharks. Problem is solved. And that's how I did it. I took the money from my pocket. And the first loan was total of $27, given to 42 people. That's as small as you can get. And I felt, OK, I did something. Then enormous reaction that I get from the people look at me as if I'd done a miracle. I said, my god. You can make so many people so happy with such a small amount of money. Why shouldn't you do more of that? So I started taking more money out of my pocket, giving it to more people, and everybody starts coming to me. And I started as much as I could. Then I said, why don't you connect you with the bank? Bank said, no way. We don't lend money. So I offered myself as a guarantor to the bank. I said, I'll sign all your papers. If they don't pay back, I'll pay back. And that was the beginning of what is now known as microcredit. And in terms of uh, one person making a difference, and obviously you believe that a single person can make a difference in these huge, intractable things, you won the Nobel Peace Prize. How has that helped, having that, that award, that recognition, how has that helped you change things, or has it? Not only one person can uh, help solve problems, one can, person can change the whole world. That's the power of human beings, unlimited capacity to do things. It doesn't need big things to be happening, small things. If you can solve one tiny problem, then you have showed the way, you crack the problem. The rest is uh, just simple history because it will be repeated and everything will be done. Nobel Peace Prize was a fantastic thing to happen to anybody's life. It's such a prestigious prize. The moment you get it, the whole world pours over on you to find out who the person you are and what kind of thing you did. Everybody is in schools, in newspapers, in television screen. This is one prize which is covered all over the world, in every single language, in every single newspaper in the world, in the first place news. So that gives you an enormous amount of exposure and people want to know what you do, what you did. Same things what you used to say before the prize, people paid no attention whatsoever. They said, oh, this is a stupid thing to hear. After you get the prize, suddenly you say, what wise words. Suddenly the prestige of the words becomes so important. So while this lasts, so you try to make good use of it so that you can communicate with people. 
because the limelight and the press and media doesn't last very long because other things keep happening. You go backwards and others take over the center stage. So this is a very short span that you have to communicate yourself to the people. You know, we were also talking about education down yes. there, and this is, of course, an area that's changing dramatically with technology mm -hmm. and uh, the ability for great world teachers to reach lots and lots of people. And you said something really imagine, interesting. You said, imagine there's just one university for the entire world. Can you explain that and explain how that might impact and how fast you see something like that coming around? It's a communication. It's communi uh, the technology of communication is expanding so fast. In 1996, in Bangladesh, there was hardly half a million telephones in the whole country. Today, in 2013, over 100 million subscribers of the cell phone. Cell phone didn't exist in 1996. Today, it's everybody's hand, poor, young, old, doesn't matter. So that's the spread of this technology. I said, given this technology, we talk about education and things like that in the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm school rooms, teachers, curriculums, and so on, where you get enrollment. Why enrollment? This is a global university, continuously changing itself, improving things, and so on. All the best teachers in the world coming with their ideas, and we go to the, attend the, whatever I want to attend, this is my discretion, whatever I want to learn. They have some slots that you have to have this degree, if you can do this, I'll do that. So that's the kind of thing. We have to imagine that kind of thing. Otherwise, it will never happen. Imagination is the one which will solve all this problem, uh, rather than having one more school, another more school. I said, for example, look at the illiteracy. People are illiterate in this century. Is it possible? Why should anybody be illiterate? It's so much fun with the mobile phone, it, like you play games and like kids play, and suddenly you are doing that. You are so interested in communicating with your friends. You never realize that you learn how to communicate, how to write, how to uh, uh, get responses and uh, share with everybody else. This, it should be a natural process of growing up, mm -hmm. not as going to school, or carrying a book, take teacher. So we have to redesign the whole thing. And I give the example of science fiction. I said like a Star Trek or uh, all those uh, uh, beautiful movies that we have and the shows. I said, fantastic thing is science always follows science fiction. And that's how all this become accomplished. We didn't go to the moon, but science fiction took us there <laughs> long before. And then we went to the moon. Everything happens. I said, but we don't have social fiction. Hmm. We don't have movie on social fiction. What kind of society you want to build? That's what's missing. Imagination is missing. If you bring the imagination, whole society will be moving in that direction. That's why in education, in health, in all these things, we need brilliant imagination right now. Because technology is coming. Simply you are not giving a scope which direction to go. So that's why the imagination is so important part. So let me ask you two questions on that. So can you imagine what what, what is the future of Bangladesh? If you imagine that future, a good future, and what can you imagine a world without poverty? And what would such a world look like? Bangladesh is very much on the way to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. And for those who don't know what those are, can you just summarize very quickly what those are? Millennium Development Goals are the goals set by the United Nations with the participation of all the nations around the world. What they want to accomplish by the year 2015. And one of the first goal among the eight is to reduce poverty by half by 2015. And there are health goals, there are education goals, there are gender goals and so on. All together there are eight goals. And Bangladesh is, is on the way to achieve all those millennium development goals. And number one goal, Bangladesh will very safely achieve that, reducing poverty by half. And I keep saying in Bangladesh, when do we bring it to zero? Half is good news, we have a lot, but that's not the end of it. End of it will be when we bring it to zero. So I put the date, I said 2030 will be the date for Bangladesh. We'll bring poverty to zero in Bangladesh. And then we'll run a whole page ad in the newspaper next day. Said if you can find one poor person in whole of Bangladesh, million dollar awards. And nobody can find them because we don't have any more left. So then we'll create museums, poverty museums, because our children has to now learn what poverty used to be because they will never see it in our society anymore. So they will go and feel very terrified that people had to live like that, not too far away from this age. So that whole world can do that, a world where nobody would be a poor person, because nothing wrong with the human being. If the system went wrong and punished the human being, 
So we un undo the whole thing and let human being unleash their energy, their capacity, so that they can live as a person, as a dignified person. And nobody should be an unemployed person. Why should anybody be un unemployed? Is there something wrong in a person? Nothing. So who punished you? System, something, something, stupid thing someplace, and I'm getting punished. Not one person, not thousand, not million, billions of people get punished, and they call it unemployment. For no reason, any, any good reason that why able-bodied, creative human being remain wasted. What kind of society is that? So we have to redesign our system so that we have our scope to unleash our energy and contribute to the whole planet rather than say, oh, I'm so busy taking care of myself. No, human beings are not for taking care of oneself. That's what the animal life, you're busy with yourself. Human life is about being together and take care of everybody else. That's what the human life, and be creative. So let me ask you one last question. So when you were, when you were in, on that panel, one of the a very distinguished member of the audience said that you were his hero. How did that make you feel? That's a wonderful feeling that uh, it, it, this is a gathering that I thought, and I came with all the wealthiest people in the world assembling. So, and if one of the participants saying, my, I'm a hero, I'm the one coming from the other side of this planet. When I lend money to the beggars, $2, $3, I beg, I'd lend money to $30, $40 to women, millions of poor women in Bangladesh. And that's where I come from. And I see poverty in everyday situation. Now suddenly you hear that some wealthiest person in the world saying that you're my hero. That makes you feel enormously well.